All right, everyone, welcome back to the Vantage Seminar. And today we're so uh, lucky to have Alvaro Lozano Robledo speaking to us about the distribution of ranks of elliptic curves and the minimalist conjecture. And uh, one announcement before we get started is that we're gonna take verbal questions at the end of the talk, but feel free to use the chat window to ask and answer other questions. Uh, also, um, Alvaro, is it all right if we uh, post your lecture to YouTube after this talk? Yes, yes, of course. All right, thank you. All right, well, um, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for pointing your direction, uh, your internet connection in the direction of my talk. Uh, and thank you to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to talk in this seminar. It's my uh, pleasure to talk about ranks of elliptic curves, which is my favorite topic in number theory. Um, there's been already two uh, wonderful talks by Poonen and Elkies on ranks of elliptic curves, and I highly recommend you watch those also. If you haven't yet, they were awesome. Um, and uh, what I would like to do today is supplement uh, what they did by talking a little bit about data. So I would like to give you a tour of uh, the data that is available to us and what does that, does that say about um, conjectures and about what we know about the distribution of ranks of elliptic curves given the data we do have. Let me get started. Uh, our goal uh, is to understand the possible structures of the Mordell Vey group. So we want to understand what are the possible uh, structures of the rational uh, points, the group of rational points on an elliptic curve. And uh, we know uh, that by the Mordelve uh, theorem, we have a, a decomposition of the group of rational uh, points into uh, a finite group uh, that is just a torsion part, uh, and then uh, some uh, infinite part, which is uh, what actually we're interested in right now is the rank of the elliptic curves. What is that number um, of uh, what, what is that number of independent points of infinite order? So um, I would like to start by just telling you a little bit about the torsion subgroup, just because uh, the torsion subgroup is what I say is the poster child of what an arithmetic group should be like. Um, because torsion subgroups are uh, over Q. Uh, there is a lot of research going on over for torsion subgroups over number fields, but over Q, uh, we know how to compute uh, torsion subgroups. We can do also that over number fields. We have a full classification over Q, what torsion subgroups are there. We can parameterize them in families, and we know about the statistics on torsion subgroups. So let me uh, tell you a little bit more. So uh, the torsion subgroups are computable by the Nagel-Lutz theorem or using division polynomials, we can effect, uh, efficiently compute torsion groups. Um, the famous Mazur's theorem tells you what are the possibilities for torsion groups. It's one of these uh, 15 possibilities up to isomorphism. Uh, we know how to parameterize uh, elliptic curves with a given torsion. Uh, for example, if you have an elliptic curve like the one in the picture, with a point of order eight, then we know it's in this family. Here is an elliptic curve with, uh, oops, uh, I wanted a highlighter. So uh, here's an elliptic curve with uh, torsion Z mod eight, that's the LMFDB label. And what that says is that it's in one of those families. So there's a parameter T that gives you that curve. So for example, that is uh, one in the form of that uh, Tate normal form uh, that gives you that elliptic curve with a point of order eight. Uh, we have also um, uh, statistics. So from, from a, a fairly recent paper of Heron and Snowden, they gave you uh, the statistics of how many elliptic curves are there up to a uh, height X, a naive height X. I'll define uh, heights in a moment. How many elliptic curves are there with a given torsion subgroup? And they can prove that there are, uh, they're bounded by powers of X and they tell you what that exponent is. So for example, for trivial torsion subgroups is five over six, that we knew before, uh, but for other groups such as Z mod eight, then they tell you that they, uh, the number of elliptic curves with a torsion subgroup Z mod eight grows like X to the one twelfth. By the way, there is also some uh, really cool similar work, uh, some generalization of this by Bogues and Sankar on counting elliptic curve with an isogenies, uh, so look for that. So uh, how about the rank? Is it computable? Is it, can we classify what possible ranks are there? Do we have parameterizations? Do we know about statistics? 
And the answer is mostly no, no, and no. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about um, computing ranks. So is the rank computable? Um, so you can ask, can we do it analytically? And well, yes, with an asterisk in that uh, if we assume the Birch and Strinder and Dyer conjecture, then the rank is the order of vanishing of the Hasse value of function at s equals one. But if you want to use that numerically, then you run into several um, important issues computationally in that it requires a lot of Fourier coefficients, so that's the square root of the conductor. So you need a lot of uh, computation power to do because the, the conductor grows fairly quickly. And then there are problems about identifying when, or no, when a value is actually zero and identifying when there are, uh, if, if there are two zeros that are very, very close to the critical point. So there are several issues that I'm not gonna get into, uh, but computationally is also a, a hard task and we don't really have a complete algorithm to do to do this. Although we can certify some cases, we can certify when an L value is not zero. Uh, so uh, it does give us at um, least um, upper bounds for the rank. So how about algebraically? If you want to prove um, uh, a rank, we can do it algebraically. Uh, well, no, not really in that um, we can do it, but if we assume another big conjecture, which is that shy is finite or at least that one P primary component of Sha is finite. If so, then we can do what we call descent. Uh, but again, we run into computational problems in that we might need to compute uh, arbitrarily high P descendants. Uh, and by that, I mean that the, what, um, the descent, the, the way it works is that we are trying to compute um, what we call the Mordelve group. So for example, here E mod two, and to do that, we embed it in another group that is uh, the Selmer group, in this case, the two Selmer group. And Selmer groups are great because they are computable. They are um, realizable as something very concrete. So they're finite, computable, they're defined cohomologically, but they are uh, very concrete uh, objects that we can work with. But of course, the problem is that uh, there's going to be obstructions to the, um, to the local to global principle that come from SHA. However, if we do higher descents, then we can get around that as long as SHA is finite. So doing higher descents means computing higher and higher summer groups until we reach a point where we've uh, filled in SHA. So, so much so that now we have the entire two primary component of SHA is already realized and then at the layer above, then we can compute what are the elements in Selmer elements that are the highest order, those should come, uh, those must come from Model Day, and then we can identify the Model Day group. Uh, if you haven't seen this in practice, it's, it's just a very cool um, algorithm, or well, algorithm again with an asterisk if shy is finite. Um, let me just say uh, a word about how I think about it. So again, uh, we have an elliptic curve and we have these um, sort of covering spaces that come from the Solmer group. So if the Solmer group uh, is an F2 module of dimension N, then it's generated, there are N generators that are Solmer elements. And uh, these Solmer elements we're going to realize as, um, as rational, uh, as curves, together with maps, rational maps that go to E. So uh, the, these, uh, these curves are locally solvable everywhere, and the question is whether they are globally solvable. If so, then we can send a point uh, to E. Um, so again, this can be made very concrete. So for example, here's an elliptic curve, and uh, in here, the, summer, the two Selmer group is uh, five-dimensional over F2, so there are five Selmer elements that you can concretely write equations for, and they're represented by these uh, hyperelliptic curves, and then there are maps, rational maps down to uh, E. These are locally solvable, solvable everywhere, so we try to find rational points on these spaces, and we find, uh, with a simple search, uh, we find some points, and then uh, there are spaces where maybe we haven't found points yet, um, we, maybe we didn't look far enough. So, but at least the ones, the points we do have, we can send them to E, and uh, those points, give you points on the elliptic curve. Uh, notice that the height, um, just the naive height of the points has, uh, was lower in the summer elements. That's one key uh, 
a fact of this descent that it's easier to find points on the summer elements if they are there. So in any case, uh, these blue points map to points that are torsion, while the orange point is mapping to a point that is uh, of infinite order. So we already have one point of infinite order and the rank is at least one. Now, we do not find points on uh, E4 and E5. So uh, what can we do is keep going up. Now is when we would do a four descent to try to see what's happening with those and, uh, and find that those are actually elements of Sha. By the way, um, there, uh, if we assume that Sha is finite, then uh, its order for an elliptic curve, its order is a square, and uh, there has to be pairs that come like this. So it means that the dimension of Sha, the two uh, part of Sha, has to be even. So if there is one, there is another one. This will uh, be important later. Uh, but uh, we are done. We've classified all the uh, Selmer elements as either coming from Model Vey or Sha. So that tells me that the Selmer group is, uh, has a two, dim two dimensions coming from torsion, one dimension coming from rank, and two dimensions coming from Sha. So the rank is one for this elliptic curve, and there's some two torsion uh, in addition to it. Okay, so we've done a descent. All right, so how about statistically? Can we understand the rank uh, statistically speaking? And well, the answer is no, we, are, uh, we have a very primitive understanding of any statistic, but the average is the simplest of statistics, so we can ask uh, what is the average rank of an elliptic curve? For that, you have to put some notion of height, some notion of um, just ordering the elliptic curve somehow, so we can take a limit uh, over um, some notion of height. So um, I'm going to um, group together all the elliptic curves in a set uh, calligraphic E in such a way that there is one model per isomorphism class over Q. And then we're going to call the naive height of E is going to be the maximum of 4A cubed or 27B squared. Uh, we will talk about another height in a moment, which is that I can take the height to be the conductor of the elliptic curve, and, uh, and that would give you a different ordering on, on uh, an elliptic curves, and then you can do a, a different counting. Okay, so uh, I will also define um, sets up to height x. So this is elliptic curves up to height x, and whenever I write a pi, uh, that's a counting function. So in this case, pi of e is counting how many elliptic curves are there up to height x. All right, so um, what now we can formalize the, our question about the average rank is that we would like to know the behavior of this function uh, average rank, uh, so the sum of all the ranks up to height x divided by the number of elliptic curves up to height x. So what do we know about that? Um, well, what can we sort of, at least heuristically, we don't know much. So heuristically, uh, this is our heuristic understanding of what the average should be comes from a few things. So one, uh, the Birch and Schneider Dyer conjecture tells us that together with the functional equation of the function, which the functional equation is known by modularity over Q, so that we have, BSD we do not have, but together implies that the rank parity, the parity of the rank is dictated by the sign of the functional equation by what's called the root number. Now we do have some progress on BSD and parity. I'm not going to talk uh, in detail about those, but whenever we actually do know BSD, so rank zero, rank one, whenever there are cases where we know BSD, then uh, we do know that uh, um, the parity matches the root number. Okay, so um, on the other hand, the root numbers, the signs of the functional equations are believed to be uh, very nicely distributed because they are um, essentially defined by local conditions. Uh, so there's a lot of work on root numbers. Uh, Rorlich has a, a lot of um, papers on root numbers, for example, Health God uh, uh, proved this nice distribution of, of root numbers in, in several uh, families of elliptic curves. Uh, so we believe that the root numbers are, again, in quotes, nicely distributed. And uh, putting those two things together, it leads to our heuristic uh, would be a guiding principle, the parity principle that 50% of elliptic curves should have odd rank and 50% of elliptic curves should have even rank. Okay. Um, together with another guiding principle, uh, there's this sort of uh, guiding principle in number theory that number theoretic objects, they shouldn't have more properties than they have by their basic 
uh, invariance. So in this case, uh, the minimalist principle proclaims that there are as few rational points on elliptic curves as is possible given the constraints given by the parity principle. So if the parity tells you that the rank should be odd, there should be a rank one, the smallest possible, so there are infinitely many points. If the parity tells you the rank is even, there should be rank zero, and there should be finitely many points, distortion. So together, parity and the minimalist principles put together give you what we call sometimes the minimalist conjecture. There's a folk conjecture that um, comes in several names, the rank distribution conjecture, the 50-50 conjecture, um, but uh, let's call it here the minimalist conjecture, which says uh, that if you fix a global field K, asymptotically, 50% of elliptic curves over K have rank zero and 50% have rank one. And moreover, the average uh, rank, when you take the limit, is a half, okay? So what do we know at least of our ranks over Q? Um, we know the following. So by, with a ton of work, uh, we, uh, we know that the limit of the average rank, so the average rank of all elliptic curves, is bounded between uh, 0 0.26 and 0 0.885. And uh, this comes from lots of uh, very deep work by Bhargava, Dokchitra, Shankar, Skinner, Uban, Zhang, and many others. Uh, so these seemingly um, um, harmless uh, bounds are actually huge theorems in that here, we basically need everything we know about BSD to prove that bound. And on this hand, other hand, we need everything that we know about the uh, geometry of numbers, um, which is uh, some, some very um, um, hot topic at the moment. But um, so those two bounds are, uh, they go a huge amount of work into proving those two bounds of the average rank. All right. So, um, so uh, in, 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 in actually, so the, the minimalist conjecture was first proposed over families of quadratic twists. So if you have an elliptic curve E, then, um, then a quadratic twist is defined as follows. The quadratic twist by D is defined like so. And therefore, um, then the elliptic curve E, uh, an elliptic curve E, what the conjecture said, what called the conjecture in 79, is that the, um, the average rank among twists, among quadratic twists of an elliptic curve, of a fixed elliptic curve, is a half. Um, there is uh, quite a bit of progress on Goldfield's conjecture, so the average rank on families of, on certain families, and in particular the families of quadratic twists of an elliptic curve. Uh, first, there was uh, a, a, quite a bit of support coming from random matrix theory and computations about like models of how the uh, the distribution of ranks should uh, seems to follow uh, models from uh, random matrix theory, uh, work over function fields, and all this work even in includes heuristics on what twists have even parity and positive rank. Uh, more recently, Smith has proved that uh, the virgin series and dire conjecture implies Goldfeld in many cases, and then more even more recently, uh, Daniel Chris has shown that Goldfeld holds for the congruent number family. Um, so we, we know quite a bit about uh, Goldfields, um, but not so much about the full minimalist conjecture for all elliptic curves. So uh, as I was saying at the beginning, what I would like um, to um, what I would like to talk about is about the data. What data do we have available to us, and what does it say about these conjectures and about the distribution in general of ranks of elliptic curves? So um, let me give you just a brief history of how um, elliptic curve data has been uh, accumulating. So uh, in uh, the Antwerp 1972, the numerical tables on elliptic curves, uh, there was a list of all curves with conductor up to uh, 200. That's in the background, by the way, uh, in this slide, that background comes from those tables uh, from Antwerp. Um, later on, uh, Brumer and McGuinness uh, in 1990, found about 300 uh, elliptic curves of prime conductor up to uh, 10 to the 8. Uh, in 1997, uh, Cremona released uh, the first version of uh, his database and found all the curves up to conductor 120,000. 
uh, and by 2002, Stein and Watkins found first all the curves of prime conductor up to 10 to the 10, and also con uh, composite conductors up to 10 to the 8, but with discriminant up to 10 to the 12. So let me tell, I just stop time there and see what, uh, what average ranks looked by then, by 2002. And remember that Goldfeld's conjecture, for example, was from 79. Uh, so uh, the average rank in the Stein-Watkins uh, database, so if you take all the elliptic curves in the Stein-Watkins database, and now the height is the conductor of uh, the elliptic curve, and then you try to do what is the average rank as the conductor grows, then it turns out that the average rank grows with the conductor instead of dropping to a half. So this is uh, quite odd and surprising that, um, well, first of all, that the average rank is nowhere near a half. Uh, so the last value in this graph is, graph is 0 0.86, and that is not decreasing, uh, seemingly, uh, it's actually increasing. So this is, uh, this was taken from a, a snap in time, snapshot in time of a talk by Galvin in 2011 on the average rank of elliptic curves. Let me take another snapshot of uh, some paper of Bechtemirov, Mazur, Stein, and Watkins in 2007. Uh, here is the, um, the average rank in the Stein Watkins, data, uh, Watkins database as a function of the log of the conductor. And uh, they actually noticed something also very interesting that the growth is different uh, depending on the sign of the discriminant. So if you restrict your database to uh, elliptic curves with a positive discriminant, then the average rank seems to be higher and increasing um, uh, than, um, than the average if, the, if you limit to discriminant being negative. Okay, so, um, all right. So uh, clearly we needed more data and more data we got. Uh, so as of 2019, now the Cremona database contains about like 3 million curves, uh, all up to conductor uh, 500,000. And that data is also available at the friendly LMFDB database. Uh, it's at your fingertips and you can find uh, the data on those curves. And uh, more importantly uh, to this talk, um, in 2016, Balakrishnan, Ho, Kaplan, Spicer, Stein, and Wigan released another database, uh, what I call the BHKSSW database, with about, with about 239 million elliptic curves, which are all up to uh, height 2.7 times 10 to the 10, okay? Uh, plus six large height data sets of 100,000 uh, curves each with some higher heights. All right, so what does their uh, database say about the rank? Well, a big sigh of relief, that's what it gave uh, that database in that uh, now the, um, the rank does grow at the very beginning, but then starts to drop. Starts to drop really slowly. Uh, notice the, the bounds on the, on the y-axis here, that uh, the, the last value here is still 0.919, in the in this database, uh, so um, so there is uh, still quite a, quite a ways to go all the way to a half, and um, and yeah, and the these sort of local max of heights looks like it's uh, at uh, height seven point eight times ten to the eight. All right, so um, this graph brings uh, perhaps more questions than it answers. Um, which is still like why, first of all, why is there such a sharp increase in average uh, rank at the very beginning of the interval? And then um, why is it dropping so slowly? And is it really dropping to uh, a half? Um, so um, th th these are very good questions. There are some questions more specific about like whether the limit exists in the chat. And uh, I, I definitely let all, all those people to answer um, those questions. I, I can talk about those um, more specifics in a, in a bit uh, at the end of the talk. But yeah, we would like to know why is there such increase and then whether the average rank goes to half in the limit or at least the limb, in, the limb inf and the limb sup. Uh, we don't know that this limit exists, um, but computationally we would like to, um, to see where this average goes. All right. So um, some data that uh, you may not have seen, I had not seen before, I've done quite a bit of work with, with this database about um, 
with the data that we do have. So let me show you some uh, signal analysis with the contributions by rank on the average rank. So here again, the blue line of the blue dots is the average uh, rank as a function of the naive height. And then rank contributions by rank one, two, three, four, and five are in different colors as shown. So, um, so the red line is the contribution that elliptic curves that just have rank one divided by the total number of elliptic curves. What is that contribution adding to the average rank? So uh, let me zoom in in one of those. By the way, uh, from now on, the interval is going to be uh, on this side. Uh, the interval is 0 0.03, just so you have an idea of the scale, except at the very end, it will be a different interval. So uh, here you can see that uh, the contribution of rank one is strong at the beginning of this then sort of like tempers, but somehow the contributions by all the ranks are very different. Um, for rank two, it also starts, there's a, a large contribution of elliptic curves of rank two at the very beginning that drops quite rapidly. Um, for rank three is different. Of course, we don't expect too many elliptic curves of rank three, not until, um, I forget what's the, the first height of rank three and all the conductors in like 5,000. Um, but I forget what the, well, anyway, uh, the, uh, you, you, as you can see, the, um, the contributions are quite different depending on the rank. And this is the contribution, rank five, as is here, I had to zoom in because there is very few elliptic curves of rank five. And overall, there's only like 6,000 elliptic curves of rank five in the database. Uh, so the contribution to the average rank is quite small. Okay. So, um, so here's the question. If the minimalist conjecture holds, at what naive height should we expect the average rank to be about a half? Um, so I tried to answer this question. I propose, well, I, I challenge myself to find some sort of probabilistic model that explains the graph of the average rank up to height x. And um, while we're shooting for the moon, I would like some model that explains the proportional elliptic curves for each rank up to height x, and not just asymptotically, I really am interested in actual data of elliptic curves, so I want to know at height 10 to the 12, what is the distribution of ranks? How many ranks of, uh, how many elliptic curves of rank one, two, three, four should I expect? So uh, in 2016, I proposed a probabilistic model based on an idea of Cramer for a random model of prime numbers for ranks to try to answer these questions. And um, whether or not you believe the, um, the model, I think you'll, uh, you'll be interested in some other features of ranks that I'll, that I'll show up in a moment. So uh, here are some spoilers of uh, what the model predicts. So in blue again is the database uh, data on the average rank and in red is the prediction of the average rank. Um, so once the model is built, it can predict what the average rank function should be and it's um, and that kind of a fit um, is what you get. So there is, um, with a zoom in, again, the interval in the y-axis of 0 0.03. Uh, there is some discrepancy uh, in the model to begin with, uh, but then it seems like uh, the asymptotic behavior is, um, is correct. Um, but the beauty of coming up with a probabilistic model is that uh, the probabilistic model comes with error estimates by default, by, um, um, by variance and standard errors and things of that sort. So the model predicts what this error uh, might be, and you'll see at the end that um, the, the bound of the error is within what the model predicts. All right, so um, the model is built actually modeling um, contributions of different ranks. So it also predicts, it does predictions of what the average rank uh, one contribution should be an average uh, rank two and rank three and rank four and rank five with those contributions are which put together give you the average rank uh, of elliptic curves. So, um, so let me get back to the graph of the average rank and then try to, um, uh, well, now that we have a model for it, uh, well, we can keep computing num uh, values of that function to try to estimate uh, what the limit is and uh, where, where does it go. So one can zoom out in that graph. So this is the interval now up to here that we have data. And then the red uh, line continues, which is just the prediction. 
notice that up to height uh, 10 to 11, uh, the average rank has not dropped significantly. If you keep going, uh, then by somewhere in height 10 to the 12, you do reach the one theoretical bound for the limb soup that we have through the Bhagava uh, Shankar bound um, is uh, crossed somewhere around here. So, you, so we expect that somewhere in height 10 to the 12, we would see uh, the average rank be lower than the, that, that predicted bound uh, or that proved bound. Uh, and then if you really zoom out, so if you go to heights of 10 to the 100, then you start to see that the average rank uh, is close to 0 0.5. Let me just give you a table of these uh, conjectural values of the average rank that the model would predict. And again, I'll point out that if you want to see somewhere like really close to 0 0.5, then we should probably um, expect that we're going to need to go at least to height 10 to the 100 to see such a thing. So, um, so this is not uh, surprising given the model that uh, we're still really far from seeing a half if, if the minimalist conjecture is actually true. Okay, so um, by the way, uh, as I said, the second goal of the model was to actually do predictions, just numerical predictions of how many ranks are there at each height. So let me give you one, uh, one such uh, result. So for example, if you take uh, now RR is going to be the family of elliptic curves of rank R and how many elliptic curves are there up to height X of rank R, then uh, the model, so this is the actual value. The first line is the actual value, how many elliptic curves are there in the database of each rank one, two, three, four, and five. So look, for example, and there are 6,400 elliptic curves of rank five uh, the model predicts uh, that there should be about 6,400 elliptic curves with an error of 43 curves, which is at 0.66%. And again, I'll explain what this uh, term is in a moment, but the, uh, the model predicts an error. So it tells you that there should be an error about 100 curves and the bound is within that error. All right, so let me just again give you a sense of how the probabilistic model was built. Um, but um, and again, whether you uh, believe these numerical um, heuristics is one thing, but there is some, um, some data that I think is very interesting that this is based on, on that you'll be interested in. All right. So the model is built uh, from the idea of Kramer of um, doing a random model of prime numbers. So remember that the prime number theorem suggests that a number is prime with probability one over log x. And in Cramer model, Cramer's model in 1936, what he proposed is creating a number of bins, Bx, one for each integer, that have uh, red and white balls, red representing prime numbers. And then the, ch the chance of drawing one red ball from a bin is one over log x. And then what you do is uh, you do repeatedly, you draw a ball from e each bin and record where there was a red ball. And that gives you a space of sequences where there were the possible sequences of prime numbers. And then out of the space of all such sequences, you uh, predict properties for prime numbers from the asymptotics of statistics of C. So uh, the question is for uh, elliptic curves, what are the bins going to be? And um, how, how do you build something like this for elliptic curves? And the bins are going to come from Selmer groups. So recall the, the sequence. Uh, that defines the, the two Solomon and Shaw. And, um, and then uh, we define the, the Selmer rank of an elliptic curve or cell rank uh, by uh, the dimension of the Selmer group, the F2 dimension minus the contribution that is easily computable. So the contribution from two torsion. So that, uh, that gives you a naive bound on the rank that the rank of an elliptic curve is a most the summer rank of an elliptic curve. And uh, what I was interested in um, this many years ago uh, with two co-authors, uh, we wrote a paper trying to understand what happens if you restrict yourself to a family of high summer rank, then what are the distribution of ranks within uh, that family? So knowing that the summer rank is 20, what are the possibilities um, what, what are the probabilities that the rank is 0, 2, 4, 6, etc.? So 
Um, so we model the distribution of MW ranks for a fixed summer rank N and a fixed naive height X. I don't want cumulative uh, pr probabilities. I want, uh, I wanted really to know what is the probability at height exactly X. So the bins coming from back to Cremere, the bins are really going to be, uh, first of all, there's going to be infinitely many um, different colors of balls in the bins. You know, there's a, a one color for each possible summer rank. And then uh, there's going to be another set of sub bins, which are uh, the bins of uh, summer elements. And there, there are two colors, more than they or Sha colors. Okay, so uh, what we're going to, um, say, um, we're, we're, going to, we're going to define the uh, set of uh, elliptic curves at height x. So remember that in parentheses meant height up to x with a super, uh, with superscript that is height exactly x. And this set is the elliptic curves of height x and summer rank n. Okay, so here's um, basically uh, how the model works. I start with an elliptic curve at height x, and then that elliptic curve is going to have a summer rank, say summer rank n, and then there will be uh, n generators of the summer rank part. So here um, I'm taking elliptic curves uh, or the summer elements that correspond to things that do not come from torsion. So there is, uh, these are generators of the summer rank part of the summer group. And um, for each one of those, I want to decide if there is, if they are um, more than they elements or that there is uh, rational points or they are shot. Again, remember that the, there is a parity concerning that if we assume the finiteness of Shah, then um, whenever there is one of these summer elements uh, is Shah, then there's gonna be a corresponding one that is Shah also. All right, so um, we're going to say, uh, I would like to compute the probability that an elliptic curve of height x is of summer rank n, and at that probability I'm going to call it theta n. And I would like to compute the probability that a summer element is more than v, and that probability I'm going to call it rho n of x. And therefore, the probability that a summer element is sha is uh, 1 minus rho n of x. All right, so. Um, my goal was to create the simplest model I could think of, run it and see if it matched what we see. So run it and see if it gave any evidence that the distribution of ranks of elliptic curves looked like a random model of some sort and what model that would be. So I was trying for the simplest model possible. So in that vein, so what I suggested is that, well, the probability that a summer element is Model Veosha is going to follow a Bernoulli distribution with probability rho n. I don't know yet what rho n is, but I'm going to assume that the probability is uh, the distribution is just a Bernoulli. And then I'm going to assume first uh, also that the probability of an elliptic curve is of summer rank n, that it also follows a Bernoulli distribution. And uh, the distribution of these summer elements, whether they're Model Veosha, if you assume that this is a Bernoulli, and you assumed that the, that the um, events are independent, that it would follow a binomial. Um, it's not a binomial of n um, choices in, in Bernoulli's, because as I said, there is some parity concern. So, um, so summer elements are paired in some way that really everything is decided by n over two or the floor of n over two summer elements. So this would be the most basic way that uh, this distribution could B, um, and we'll, we'll see in a moment that actually this is um, not, I, I'm in the model that I proposed, actually did not assume that these are independent and I don't think it should be independent because these summer elements are very much related to each other. All right, so this is the basics. So for example, if n equals four, so if the summer rank is four, then the expected value of the number of ellipticers of summer rank four and more than they rank zero, two, and four, should be given by, so I, there are two pairs of summer elements, the summer rank elements to consider. So there's a pair and a pair, and you have to decide if this is a pair that is Sha and a pair that is Sha that would give you rank zero. And then the probability that this happens would be, uh, well, the number of elliptic curves at height X, the probability that an elliptic curve at height X is summer rank four, and the probability that 
each one of those two are SHA elements. Similarly, if you want rank four, then both pairs have to be more del Vey, so you get the same type of probability, but now with row four instead of one minus row four. And for this pair, there's two possibilities. This is SHA or this is more del Vey, and this is SHA or more del Vey with opposite parity here, and that gives you uh, this distribution, all right? Uh, and again, this would assume that they're independent, which are not, and the model does not assume so, but in any case, this is just for the talk simplification. And uh, in an odd rank, the parity um, determines that there has to be a Selmer element that is more del Vey, so that is probability one, this element will have, um, will be more del Vey, and then again, the rank is determined by what happens to two pairs. So again, we get probabilities that are similar in this case, um, the probabilities that they, there will be um, of each type of rank. And again, the probability that this is SHA and this is SHA, I believe those need to be somewhat dependent in that those similar elements are, they're essentially twists of each other. So if one has rational points, um, the other one having rational point, there is some dependency. And so in the model, I do study some covariance factors that I calculate and add to the model to compute um, with the probabilistic model. In any case, whether you believe this or not, now we can look at the data of elliptic curves and see if it follows something like this. And uh, so if you look at elliptic curves, so you look in the database uh, for uh, for example, this interval right here, these are uh, elliptic curves of summer rank two, summer rank three, summer rank uh, four, and summer rank five. For example, in rank three, the rank will be one or three. The number of elliptic curves of rank one are in blue. Uh, the number of rank three are in blue here. Uh, and then in green are the predictions. So you see that those probabilities actually match uh, fairly well uh, what actually happens in that interval. Once you've computed what theta might be and what rho might be, it actually gives you some um, accurate description of what happens numerically. It gives you some predictions. So for example, um, in, the, in this interval, there is 158 elliptic curves of summer rank five. The actual distribution of ranks uh, with rank one, rank two, oops, uh, rank uh, three and rank five, uh, wrong pen. So this is uh, rank one, rank three, and rank five. And these are the predictions. It predicts there should be about 21 elliptic curves of rank one, about 73 of rank three, and, seven, and 63 of rank five, uh, which is uh, similar to what actually happens. So those models seem to match uh, reality, at least in, within the database. Um, but so the cool thing about the database is that it came with these large height uh, databases, so several other databases. So the, the model was based on the uh, database up to 10 to the um, um, 10 to 10, uh, and then I tested that out with the large height models, and the the, the accuracy seemed to still uh, follow in the larger heights. Okay, so what is the model? Um, how is the probabilistic model, once you actually want to build a probabilistic space uh, built out of, is uh, built out of what I call just uh, test elliptic curves. So a test elliptic curve is a triple E. It just um, keeps the very basic information uh, that we need for the model. We need the height uh, of the elliptic curve. We need the Selmer rank of E, that's N, and uh, we need to know the composition of the Selmer group in terms of whether what Selmer elements are um, shown, what Selmer elements are more del Vey. As I said, this is actually keeping track of pairs of Selmer elements uh, that are connected, uh, that they're both either more del Vey or Sha, but in any case, the model just keeps track of uh, n over two elements or the floor of n over two elements and decides whether they're more del Vey or Sha. Okay, so um, we're going to also just talk about uh, the set of test elliptic curves, test elliptic curves up to height x, test elliptic curves with summer rank n, all those uh, that will be notation like before, but there's a twiddle. And then we can retrieve the rank of a test elliptic curve just by 
n modulo 2 plus 2 times the number of Mordovay elements in summer 2 in that vector of symbols, okay, of that summer elements. So um, to an ordinary elliptic curve, uh, we can attach uh, a test elliptic curve. So if you have an elliptic curve, uh, y squared equals x cubed plus 2993x, uh, you can uh, compute the height. That will be 4a cubed. So this is the height of the elliptic curve. A two descent will show that the uh, Selmer group is five dimensional, but there is some torsion. So the Selmer rank is actually four and a higher descent shows that the rank is actually two and um, Sha is two dimensional in the two Selmer group. Okay, uh, so all together you get a test elliptic curve with the height, the um, Selmer rank, and then uh, two symbols, Mordel Vey for one pair that represents uh, this and one pair of shy elements that represents uh, this pair. Right. So uh, to put then the probabilistic model together, we need a few estimates. Uh, we need an estimate of the number of elliptic curves of height x. We need an estimate of the number of elliptic curves of height x and summer rank n. So the proportion at any given height of elliptic curves by summer rank. We need uh, that proportion. So theta n x is uh, what I'm going to call that proportion. And then we need rho n, uh, which is the probability that a test Selmer element that is coming from a non-torsion um, uh, rational point, uh, a test Selmer element coming from a Selmer rank n elliptic curve, height x, is a Mordel Vey element. And if you want a thorough experiment, uh, here is a question. Should that rho n x depend on n? So if I have a Selmer element, so think of a quartic that represents that Selmer element, um, and if I tell you um, the coefficient, so you know the height of that Selmer element, um, will the probability that that has a rational point, will it depend on n? In other words, do Selmer elements remember the rank of their Selmer, um, of their Selmer group? Um, and um, we'll, we'll, we'll see the answer to that in a moment. Okay, so uh, first of all, the number of elliptic curves at height exactly x, that can be estimated. For a theorem of rumor tells us that the number of elliptic curves up to naive height x uh, is about um, kappa times x to the 5 over 6. So you can estimate how many elliptic curves are there uh, in intervals. Okay, so that gives us an estimate. And if you compare that with the actual data, there is a very nice um, uh, there is nice um, uh, matching of the data with that model of the number of elliptic curve being kappa times x to the uh, 5 over 6. Notice, however, that there is um, there's an error uh, estimate in there in that um, uh, approximation, and uh, that actually will limit the power of our model um, once we do, for example, average um, averages. Okay, so here is the values of the number of elliptic curves up to height x. For uh, the number of elliptic curves up to uh, or uh, exactly height x and summer rank n, um, well, uh, we have the, the punin range conjectures that for p equals 2 reads as follows. So following work on quadratic twists by Heath Brown, Monsky, Kane, Swinerton, and Dyer, and there is more recent work on this, um, there is this conjecture that the probability, so the the final distribution of uh, how many elliptic curves of each summer rank are there. Uh, so in the limit, um, the probability is uh, given by this formula. So I'm going to assume uh, the, the Punin range uh, heuristics in the model, and these are some of the values of the Punin range constants. Okay, so um, we are going to assume in the model, as I said, that picking a test elliptic curve of summer rank n out of uh, the, the bag or the bin of elliptic curves of height x, uh, that is just a Bernoulli distribution. Okay, so there's a Bernoulli distribution with probability theta n, and I'm going to assume that that limit, the limit of the distribution is Sn, the value from the uh, Punin range heuristics. So let me show you the data from the database of what that looks like. So what is the proportion of elliptic curves of high of summer rank n at each height? In blue is summer rank one, then two, three, four, and five. And um, 
for example, remember, so the limit, uh, the conjectural limit is 0 0.41. So it's not too far off uh, from that limit and um, it seems it's plausible it is converging to that limit uh, from the data. So what I did is come up with, uh, again, for numerical computations, for numerical purposes, come up with the simplest models I could think of of uh, that fit these graphs. So the simplest models being uh, simplest algebraic or rational functions that would be a good fit for this. And um, these are the ones that seem to be uh, the best fits. And then uh, through a regression, I computed values of those constants, uh, CN and EN, uh, to, uh, to model those, um, those graphs. And it seems like there is a very nice agreement between the data and those graphs. Unfortunately, I do not have a heuristic reason for the shape of the graphs, and I would love if somebody uh, had um, a reason why uh, these graphs would look uh, like this or anything close to this or, or different. If an, an explanation for these graphs would be amazing. Um, and then you can do the same for rank four and rank five. And then you see that in rank four, for example, there is quite a bit of noise but again, if you assume that you're working with a probability uh, distribution, this noise is expected. When the, um, the probability is low, you know the, the, what the variance will be, and it actually predicts this amount of variance. So this noise is not a problem for the model. It's actually expected from a random model that there will be this much noise. Uh, so in fact, the noise can be modeled, and if you take n elliptic curves and then uh, you try to see how many of those are summer rank n that will follow a binomial distribution. If those, you are assuming that those uh, are chosen independently, then it will follow a binomial distribution. And it tells you what the binomial distribution is with uh, the expected value and the standard error. Um, since for large values of m, this binomial is approximated by a Gaussian distribution, you can test this hypothesis. So that you can go to the data and see what happens. Um, draw the Gaussian distribution that there should be and see that there is a nice match. So in here, what I did was take a hundred elliptic curves, say for example here of uh, summer rank one. Uh, so in, uh, so for summer rank one, pick a hundred elliptic curves and then see how many uh, have summer rank one. Here's somewhere the average and then how many uh, happened for 10,000 experiments, it fits that kind of distribution that you come from a binomial, which is approximated by a, um, by a Gaussian. And this would be in summer rank two, how many rank, summer rank three, how many summer rank four. All right, so that allows you to compute also uh, expected values of how many ellipticers of each summer rank there should be. And uh, again, the data matches very well the, uh, what the models predict by summer rank. And finally, you have to model what is the, uh, the row n. So what is the probability that a test summer element is more than a versus sha. In our model, we're going to assume that this function row n uh, sorry, goes to zero. And um, we're going to again assume that picking each summer element, whether it's a more than a element or not, follows a Bernoulli uh, with probability row n and the limit of the distribution is zero. Uh, here, though, picking again um, whether the, the different yi's here, these random variables, I do not assume that they are independent, and I believe they are not independent and they shouldn't be, and also assume some sort of equicorrelation between these variables, which is a technical condition I will not discuss here. So um, out of that, you can retrieve what an average rank is. Well, first of all, the average, the rank of a test elliptic curve would be n mod two times two times the number of more delve elements in that test elliptic curve. Uh, that gives you the expected value of the rank and it gives you the expected value of a sum of ranks. Um, and then out of that, you can, well, first of all, model the average rank and also model what rho n should be. So I have data for rho n and now here comes the, uh, the surprise that uh, rho n really behaves very differently, this success ratio of a summer element being more of a, it behaves very differently 
whether you have some rank two or three, for example, two is in green, three is in red. So it's much more likely that a similar element that comes from rank two is more than they, or that it comes from rank four is more than they. And for some reason, for example, the rank threes, uh, some rank threes are much less unlikely to be a, a more than they element, which is very strange, but um, it does depend on n. Okay, again, one can come up with the simplest rational functions that model this. Uh, these seem to be just constant divided by a power of x, do regression and get approximations, and then you get models for those graphs. And out of those models, now I can put the contributions. Uh, remember, first I uh, was showing you data of the contribution by rank. Here's the contribution by each summer rank. Uh, it gives me a contribution and it gives me a formula for the contribution, putting together how many elliptic curves are there, height x, how many elliptic curves are there that are summer rank n, and then what's the average rank. It gives me an estimate for the average rank in the world of test elliptic curves, and it gives me an estimate of the average rank of elliptic curves, of test elliptic curves. And as I said, it comes with an error estimate, and it comes with a standard error of the approximation of the average by the sum of the variables. Okay, and in particular, one can prove that in probability, uh, the test elliptic curves, the average rank is a half. It turns out that the limit is the sum of the odd point and rain uh, constants, which is a half, and, in the, and the limit is a half in the sense that the expected value goes to a half and the standard error goes to zero. So it's, zero, it's a half in probability. Okay, so back to the graph. Uh, remember I told you that I was gonna explain this error. Um, the last value of the average rank here is 0 0.99019. The average rank estimation is 0 0.9024. This is the absolute error. The predicted error is of this size. So the error uh, matches the, the, uh, the size uh, or the, uh, yeah, the size of the error. And um, this is a 0.05% of the actual value in error. And again, those values that I gave you at the beginning of the estimates of the average rank come from um, what I can do with the model, which is estimate what is going to happen with the average rank contributions from rank one through five. Uh, the limit or uh, the contribution in ranks one through five should be uh, this much uh, in the limit. Um, so this limit has a little bit of ways to go just to get to, to this, but um, basically at this point, you're starting to hit the, um, um, the, the limitations of the model. Okay, so um, I'm going to stop here. Uh, I just want to say again that, well, thank you um, for having me here and um, that whether or not you believe this probabilistic model, um, there are some numerical evidence coming from the data that is fascinating. For example, the rho n or theta n, and I would love to have uh, an understanding of what those functions are. And, uh, and I hope this also um, uh, brings the point that we need more data. We need a lot more data. So thank you, I'll stop there. Well, thank you for that fantastic talk. Um, thank you.